Dear Nikki Hager, you may now be part of the old guard. I thank you for your LED candles, donated to Candles for Assange, Free Assange New Zealand, and your amazing work on the open letter for Julian from 1500 journalists worldwide. I have a lot of respect for your past investigative journalism, humanitarian efforts, and work redacting documents for WikiLeaks. However, I must ask you to cease and desist labelling protesters anti-vax, white supremacists, and fundamental Christians. It smacks of desperation. 2021 seems to have brought about a kind of changing of the guard in media when it comes to integrity in the reporting of truth. The old guard self-censor to retain their reputation. They give institutions the benefit of the doubt. They even applaud censorship and smears from time to time, all the while becoming more and more out of touch from we the people. After all, we've just witnessed Noam Chomsky not only endorsing dementia-ridden war criminal candidate Biden, but now manufacturing consent for global mandates of a novel medical therapy and segrega segregating society accordingly. At the same time, we've seen Rage Against the Machine literally roll over and push the establishment narrative. This has led some to believe the vaccines are more effective than we could ever have imagined. Most of those Wellington protesters would not have had the slightest inkling about any church's involvement. If, instead of parroting what Associated Press stenographers were reporting, you had witnessed the action firsthand, you would have seen that the crowd included disenfranchised mums, dads, midwives, doctors, nurses, scientists, artists, musicians, and professionals from all walks of life, as well as iwi groups, and a united front from gangs across the country. This is unprecedented. These people should not be written off or labelled as the TV instructs. They were from across the political spectrum, with different spiritual or non-spiritual beliefs, school leaver through to PhD level education, an incredibly diverse bunch of people and far from New Zealand's media chatter on this topic. They were full of love and concern for their family and fellow citizens, not hate, certainly not racism. You, more than most, should be aware of how media rep misrepresents those who are speaking the truth. The few Nazi symbols seen on signs at the protest were directed at the New Zealand government's policy of segregation, discrimination and medical apartheid. Nothing to do with the beliefs of the 20k strong crowd. In times of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. I'm afraid to inform you, this indeed is one of those times in history. We are witnessing what it is like when journalists are too frightened to report the truth. My mother, a journalist who'd interviewed Churchill in her 20s, died last week following stroke, which happened to occur after the second jab. She was put on a euthanasia drug. However, this might have been appropriate in her case since she had suffered dementia the last 22 years. All the same, I did not get asked permission for any of these medical measures taken, despite being her power of attorney. This was especially painful to me, since I'm aware these drugs are also part of the new pandemic NIH hospital protocol the world is currently following blindly. This not only involves sending people home without treatment to self-isolate, when they inevitably become poorly, these patients are intubated onto ventilators and are eventually given these damaging yet approved COVID drugs. All the while, hospital managers are reaping the incentives for these measures to be carried out. You label the protesters as anti-vaxxers. Anti-vax is a prerogative slur similar to conspiracy theorists, which we know is used to dispose of informed opinion and facts that people do not wish to hear. Many of the people in the protest are not anti-vaccine, as they and their families have accepted traditional vaccines in the past. Have you looked into the dramatic recent change in the definition of vaccine, e.g. Merriam-Webster Medical Dictionary? Google bans journalists for reporting this. I and man, many others have accessed scientific research from public web platforms which has informed us about the many downsides of mRNA gene therapy. We recognise the dangers of surveillance capitalism, ID2020 and the Internet of Things, along with the issues in fast-tracking and injecting the global population with a novel mRNA gene therapy injectable. 
I think we need to stop dismissing people as racist or white supremacist just because that is convenient for our party politics. This is New Zealand, proudly anti-racist. Those are labels think tanks and paid trolls use to discredit anything other than the government narrative. The freedom groups are cosmopolitan and inclusive. They are not racially based. The crowds are a beautiful mix of races, sexes, ages and cultures, people from all walks of life willing to question the big pharma PR cesspit our media has become. Perhaps the government has a handful of genuine white supremacists they are presumably watching, but how on earth could anyone witnessing the protest last Tuesday make the assumption it was full of white supremacists? You call them Trump supporters. But truth is, the vast majority of these people have done enough research to uncover Trump not only rushed the vaccines through Operation Warp Speed, his executive orders allowed police state to flourish, set precedent for military control of medical services, allowed big tech corporations to thrive and corruption to thrive unchecked and lifted the gain-of-function research ban Obama had put in place, all while the establishment continues to short out the global's health service and economic system from under our feet. I don't wish to make liberal heads explode, but he pushes the vaccine proudly to this day. Most of the people in this protest would have long ago transcended kindergarten playground style party politics, certainly not supporting any of the current poor excuses for representation we have right now in this country. You label them ignorant extremists, however, the sources they were listening to in independent, reader funded media were reporting lab leaks, gain of function research, vaccine passes, and the shorting out of the health and economic system as early as April 2020. This led to their preferred news sources being censored, mocked and demonetized, only to later discover that same news gradually seeping out into mainstream talking points two years later. The psychological operation known as QAnon neuters and discredits dissent, and I imagine this couldn't be further from this crowd's mind. This, along with the unhinged legacy media psychological operation, mean the truth is now largely missing from Google platforms. The polarisation and division we are seeing now is the direct result of the interplay between two highly con contradicting narratives and is by design. <clears throat> what is the difference between conspiracy and fact? About six months. You call protesters climate deniers, but climate green activists have gone along with the legacy media narrative, which directs their action into punching down and laying guilt on the people, introducing useless 0.01% enriching Ponzi schemes like carbon tax, instead of directing the efforts where they are really needed to improve the environment, e.g. target the polluting corporations, banks, military, oil companies and monopolies raping this earth right now, i.e. punch up. They have no interest in self-sufficient people producing power, food, and building with low toxic materials. Hell, I should know. I taught Agenda 21 values as a sustainable architecture lecturer at Victoria University, Wellington, as well as in UK and Australia. But after four years near full time on the front line of this propaganda battle fighting for free press, you cannot avoid but see the wider eugenics technocracy agenda at play. Sadly, academics are given precisely the carrot and blinkered narrative they need to go along with the madness. If they see the dehumanising part of the agenda, then they put it down to being for the wider good. Yet they don't have a clue that they are building their own prison as well as ours. You call protesters anti-UN, but like many Brexiters, they are all too aware of the unelected power structures which need to be resisted, who are engaging in disaster capitalism at biblical levels with the ultimate aim of a global technocracy. That is the new world order with lipstick on, also known as Build Back Better, The Great Reset, Fourth Industrial Revolution, Biosecurity State, Biological Digital Convergence, and The Panopticon. A cursory glance at materials relating to Agenda 21, 2030 will make the transhumanist agenda crystal clear. You complain they refer to media as the enemy of normal people, yet you know these same media voices have lied us into every war for many decades and at this point have the blood of millions on their hands. In the current crisis, they have suppressed and mocked effective, patent-free, Nobel Prize-winning antiviral treatments, deleted or discounted victim testimonies and disappeared whole careers of doctors, scientists, epidemiologists, virologists, 
Nobel laureates, academics, and even the inventors of the technology being rolled out globally. It doesn't matter whether they're from Harvard, Oxford, Stanford, Lancet, British Medical Journal, Nature, etc. Speaking out is being rewarded by being smeared, struck off, and or deleted from history. The evidence of eugenic agendas at play right now globally need calling out. We are now suffering from the intellectual descendants of those Nazi scientists the UK and US rescued in Operation Paperclip. To claim legacy media has any integrity in 2021 requires a special level of brainwashing. Perhaps you could look into the government, military, intelligence links organisations like Nudge, SAGE, that weaponise applied behavioural psychology and neurolinguistic programming. The receipts are there if you dare look. Why not read the SPARS document? Lockstep 2010 or watch Event 201 to see these agendas planned ahead in fine detail. How ethical is it for the government to bypass consent by use of messaging to induce fear to drive the behaviours of the population? You talk about fundamental Christians as though spiritual beliefs are disallowed in 2021. Have you not witnessed the media's last 20 years of Islamophobia while behind closed doors our own leaders support and deploy these extremists themselves? See Kiwi-trained white helmets, for instance. How are you enjoying the Russia-China xenophobia we're seeing right now? Is it helping? We are a global family suffering under the same globalist tyrants and psychopaths. As a former atheist, I too used to mock and sneer those who spoke about their religion or spirituality. I was misdirecting my anger at organised religion that barely anyone could defend following the billions paid out in the abuse, hush money and the clear link with war criminals, blackmail and psychopaths in power. Most people, even those previously secular, are recognising that we are in a battle, a spiritual battle between good and evil right now. I'll give you this. Perhaps some people in that crowd have it wrong. Maybe communism isn't the right term. They may be wrong to focus so much on China or have hope for a puppet like Trump. But their dislike for Jacinda Ardern and her policies of segregation, discrimination, removal of habeas corpus, wanton censorship and her past record as senior policy advisor to Tony Blair while he was committing his worst war crimes is entirely justified. It should turn any person's blood cold and cause them to question the single source of truth. Back in the 80s, my mother tried to explain how I would be able to get a little closer to the truth by, say, reading between the lines about a certain topic in The Guardian, traditional left, and then reading the same topic in The Independent, traditional right. This was good advice in the 80s. It largely worked. But that advice today would be utterly meaningless when these media mouthpieces are run by a combination of CIA, MI6, Integrity Initiative, Big Tech, Think Tanks and Bill Gates et al. Six corporations control the entirety of legacy media. Yes, I'm afraid that includes ABC Australia and RNZ, whose journalists seem to have problems spelling Assange, let alone covering the case properly. These institutions died a while back, along with the censorship drive, arguably many years before that in Operation Paperclip. How any self-respecting Assange supporter, or indeed any serious journalist, could be so blind to the authoritarian, fascist, global government rolling in right now is a mystery to me. (sighs) Could the rarefied air in Roseneath be far, far above the concerns of ordinary people? 